Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and in today's video I have brought a challenge from KVPY 2022 SX category. Uh, some of the students are facing a problem in this so that's why I decided to do a video on this one. Uh, it turns out that this is not a fresh problem, KVPY has, uh, I mean the people have copied it from uh, uh, its uh, different sources, it's there in Anurag Mishra also and I've seen it in quite a few places, this is an old problem but somehow uh, it featured as it is almost uh, in KVPY. So let me read it, read it out for you and then I'll be solving this. So let's see. A projectile is launched from origin in the XY plane. X is the horizontal and Y is the vertically up direction. Making an angle alpha from the X axis. Okay. So we projected something at an angle alpha. Okay. If its distance R from the origin is plotted against X, the resulting curve shows different behaviors for launch angles alpha 1 and alpha 2. So you can see at alpha 1 the Rx is continuously increasing whereas at alpha 2 it first increases then decreases and then again starts increasing. Okay. So, uh, shows different behaviors for launch angles alpha 1 and alpha 2 as shown in the figure. For alpha 1 Rx keeps on increasing with x while for alpha 2 Rx increases and then reaches a maximum and then decreases and goes through a minimum before increasing again. Find the maximum possible angle of prediction if the distance from the origin increases monotonically with time. The actual question had some options but uh, I just wanted to save some space and I just uh, wanted to give the concept so I just removed the options. So if you want you can give it a try. Uh, the idea is to do it without calculus. Of course the, you can also do it using calculus but the approach that I am going to present uh, will avoid calculus. I will just uh, uh, not be using calculus at all anywhere in my uh, problem okay so i'll get into my analysis right away let's see so the concept that i'm going to use here is the velocity of separation uh, there's a standard concept that you study while uh, studying kinematics velocity approach velocity of separation angular velocity of one particle about the other so if there is a particle a and there is a particle b and let's say velocity of particle b is v vector and uh, position vector of b with respect to a is r vector and this angle is theta then rate of change of this distance r is nothing but the component of velocity along the line joining a b so we can say that this is simply v cos theta dr by dt is v cos theta if a is stationary and v cos theta can also be written as v dot r cap y because r cap is unit vector along this direction and when you take the dot product with unit vector you just get the component of the vector right so same thing we can think of in uh, projectile motion also let's say instantaneous position vector is r vector and the ve instantaneous velocity vector is v vector and if the particle is always moving farther from origin without any maxima minima then of course uh, the velocity of separation should always be positive uh, at every instant of time okay so uh, let's read out so now clearly initially the projectile is moving away from the origin obviously initially the distance from the origin is increasing Therefore, velocity of separation is positive. Now, if the particle is continuously moving away, the particle is to continuously move away, the velocity of separation should always be positive and never be zero or negative. So, I want that uh, the velocity of separation should never become negative. Negative means it starts, uh, the distance has started decreasing and zero also means that uh, uh, some kind of maxima or minima has occurred. So, I don't want this to be zero. So, we can say that for t greater than zero, v dot r cap should always be greater than zero. But you know that the uh, r vector, uh, the magnitude of any vector is positive. So instead of taking dot product with r cap, I can also take uh, dot product with r vector itself. So if v dot r cap is greater than 0, then v dot r vector is also greater than 0. I will be doing this for ease of mathematics. I don't want to take uh, division by a straight square root. So I am just going to use this. That velocity vector dot position vector should always be greater than 0 at all times for t greater than 0. Okay. So what is the velocity vector? You know that uh, v uh, in the horizontal direction velocity is u cos theta i cap always and in the vertical direction it is u sin theta minus gt j cap right. So this is your velocity vector and what about the position vector? So x coordinate is u cos theta t and y coordinate is uh, u sin theta I missed out at t uh, u sin theta t minus half gt square. So bear with me that's supposed to be u sin theta t minus half gt square okay. And uh, if you uh, uh, take the dot product i cap multiplied by i cap, j cap multiplied by j cap and you expand the whole thing and simplify, this simply uh, comes out to this, okay. So half t times g square t square minus 3 u g t sin theta plus 2 u square should be greater than 0 
for all times t uh, greater than zero. Okay. So uh, of course time is positive. That means what this expression should never become zero, right? Initially this expression is positive and it should remain positive. That means what it should never pass through zero. Or it should never become equal to zero. Therefore. Uh, this term being equal to zero should have no root whatsoever okay it should have only imaginary roots this should this equation should have only imaginary roots for time at which this expression becomes zero okay so this is greater than zero at all times which means this expression never changes sign which also means this is never zero for any positive time so therefore this equation g square t square plus 3 ug minus 3 ugt sin theta plus 2 u square equal to zero should not have any root and therefore its discriminant should be less than zero so that's what i have done i have taken the discriminant consider it as a quadratic in t so uh, so square 3 ug becomes 9 u square g square sin square theta okay uh, because sin theta yeah sin theta square is also there and minus 4 uh, b square minus 4 ac so 4 into 2 u square becomes 8 u square and this is g square okay this is less than zero that gives you sin square theta is less than 8 by 9 and of course uh, you are looking for acute theta so you need not worry about plus minus uh, you just take the square root so this is sin theta is less than 2 root 2 by 3 and if sin theta is less than 2 root 2 by 3 it turns out that options had the uh, the options were in terms of cos inverse the relevant option was in terms of cos inverse so i can easily convert it to cos inverse so if sin theta is 2 root 2 by 3 so perpendicular is 2 root 2 and hypotenuse is 3 so that makes the base equal to 9 minus 8 that is 1 so this is uh, theta uh, cos sin theta is less than this so cos theta is greater than 1 by 3 you know that cos theta is what cos 0 is 1 cos 90 is 0 it's a decreasing function so if sin theta is less than something cos theta should be greater than something right so cos theta is greater than 1 by 3 so this is our required condition or you can say theta should be less than cos inverse 1 by 3 so that's my required answer and that was the analysis of the problem i hope uh, you enjoyed the analysis and if you did enjoy the analysis, you know what to do. Uh, please do give it a thumbs up and uh, please share this video as much as possible with your friends through WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord or whatever cord you use for networking with them. And uh, most importantly, you know what motivates me the most? Uh, subscribers, subscribers, subscribers. Okay, So if you are not already subscribed to my channel, uh, please do subscribe to my channel. Uh, right away because that's what keeps me motivated and that's the only Guru Dakshina I want if you feel benefited from my channel. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one and as always God bless you all. Thank you.